In Monster Hunter World, there are many aspects to consider when taking on a hunt. The target, your weapon, these are all important, but hunters who want optimal performance need to consider the build they use via the armor and gear they wear. I'm Darkblade, and here are even more builds that I use for the hunting horn. The skills that you can gain from armor and even some weapons can help shape your hunter into specialized hunting machines. With the hunting horn, it is a unique weapon with a distinct playstyle. When creating builds for the weapon, I tend to steer towards support or DPS focused builds. But unfortunately, sometimes I feel restricted by the songs that certain horns play. Nonetheless, the builds featured in this video are high-end game builds aimed at endgame content. So the first build I use is the all-round build. This is an all-round build aimed at solo play for hunting horn players. It has high DPS, survivability, health regen, and the songs it has access to can also help a lot in multiplayer. So for this build you need the Kaiser Crown Gamma, Nurgagante Mel Gamma, the Draken Van Braces Alpha, Nurgagante Coil Gamma and the Nurgagante Greaves Gamma. I'm also using the Handicraft Charm 3 and for my weapon I'm using Deep Vero with an Affinity Increase Augmentation and then a Health Regen Augmentation. As for your jaws, these are mainly DPS focused ones here. I've gone for Flawless Jaws to max out peak performance, Tenderizer Jaws to max out weakness exploit, Mighty Jaw to max out maximum might, some Vitality Jaws to max out health boost, and finally a Sharp Jaw for that protective polish skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will actually be 200 health when you're on a hunt and you've taken all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 1037, which again will be higher on a hunt thanks to peak performance. You have white sharpness, 30% affinity, which will actually be 80% when you're on a hunt, so long as you have full stamina and you're going for monster weak points, and you'll have a dragon rating of 240. You'll also have high elder seal, and when it comes to your defenses, it's fairly high, especially against fire, but you're fairly weak to thunder and dragon. As for the skills, you'll have attack boost level 4. With attack boost, always try to get it to at least level 4, as not only will it provide that boost to your attack, but at level 4 it provides you an extra 5% affinity. You'll also have critical eye level 4, boosting our affinity rating. You'll have health boost level 3, increasing our maximum health to that potential 200. Weakness exploit level 3, weakness exploit increases our affinity when we're attacking monster weak points. At level 3 it's 50%. You'll have handicraft level 3, increasing the sharpness of our weapon. Peak performance level 3, increasing our overall attack so long as our health is full. You have Maximum Might level 3, increasing our affinity rating so long as our stamina is full. You have Agitator level 1, a byproduct of the gear but can still be useful. It basically increases our attack and affinity when a monster becomes enraged. And you have Protective Polish level 1. Protective Polish allows us to put a protective coating over our sharpness gauge preventing any sharpness loss for a small duration. As for the set bonuses, you only have one, Nogogante's Hunger, Haste and Recovery. This allows our attacks to potentially restore health, and this does stack with the health regen augmentation, so you can potentially restore a bit of health when you're on the offense. So there you have it. As you can see, it is a fairly straightforward all-rounder build, with lots of DPS options. Also, Deep Vero has access to some of the best songs in the game, allowing us to increase our health, attack, and defense. Unfortunately, the only time this build will suffer is when you're fighting monsters that are resistant to the dragon element. But you could potentially swap up Deep Vero in those rare occasions for a different horn. I believe the Dodogama variants come with the same songs, but instead of having dragon, you have the blast rating. So there's an option there. I know I haven't got a sonorous jewel on here, but I never found that too much of an issue with how I play the hunting horn, as I'm always refreshing the songs whenever available. Nonetheless though, this is a great build and can be used in pretty much almost any hunt in the game. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the health regen build. This is more of a survivability build. Whilst yes, it does have some damage options, its main focus is on health regen. So when using this build, you should be able to take a hit, but on top of that, you shouldn't always have to sheathe your weapon to drink a potion. So for this build, you need the Valhazak Helm Gamma, the Valhazak Mel Gamma, Nogagante Vambraces Gamma, the Valhazak Coil Gamma, and the Nogagante Greaves Gamma. I'm also using the Handicraft Charm 3, and for my weapon, I'm using the Empress Raw Ruin. This has a health regen augmentation attached to it. As for the jewels, I've gone for a few DPS ones and a few survival ones here. First of all, I've gone for Flawless Jewels to max out peak performance, Tenderizer Jewels to max out weakness exploit, Vitality Jewels to max out health boost, a Recovery Jewel to add some recovery speed, a Sharp Jewel for a protective polish, and a Sonorous Jewel to provide us with that Horn Maestro skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which again will be 200 health when you're on a hunt and taking all the relevant consumables. You have an attack of 953, which again will be higher while on a hunt thanks to peak performance. You have white sharpness, 
5% affinity, which will actually be 55% affinity so long as you're going for monster weak points, with a blast rating of 150, with a fairly strong defense, especially against water, but you're fairly weak to fire and dragon. As for the skills, you'll have attack boost level 4, health boost level 3, recovery up level 3, recovery up basically enhances our healing effects making them more effective. You also have recovery speed at level 3. Recovery speed increases the rate at which our health regenerates naturally over time. Normally this is only for the red portion of your health bar after you've taken a hit. However with the set bonus we have on this build as well it applies for the entire health bar. You have weakness exploit level 3, handicraft level 3, peak performance level 3. You have dragon attack level 2. Unfortunately it's a byproduct of the gear, it's not useful whatsoever. You have part breaker level 1, a byproduct of the gear but helps when it comes to breaking monster parts. You have Horn Maestro, level 1. Horn Maestro increases the duration that our song's buffs remain in effect. You have Protective Polish level 1, Hasten Recovery level 1. Hasten Recovery is normally the No Gigante set bonus, but it's also found on the Empress Raw Ruin. This allows us to restore health when we attack a monster. And finally, you'll have the Valhasak Vitality set bonus, Super Recovery, allowing us to restore our entire health bar over time without actually having to do anything so it's a constant heal over time so as you can see this is a high survivability build focused on health regen the Valhasak set bonus super recovery combined with recovery speed and recovery up allows us to have a constant heal over time in effect on top of that as well when we actually attack a monster we'll be restoring our health too thanks to the health regen augmentation and the hasten recovery skill this should also allow us to keep peak performance active for quite a bit adding to our overall attack so whilst you may not be bringing down monsters quite quickly with this build, you still have DPS options. Also the horn I chose, the Empress Raw Ruin, it comes with the Nogagante horn songs which include boost to our affinity, our recovery and even earplugs. Alternatively if you can't get a hold of the Empress Raw Ruin, you could use the basic Nogagante horn as it does provide you with the same songs and that way also the dragon attack will not be wasted on this build. But as always, the choice is up to you. Nonetheless, this is a great survival build for tough hunts out there. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the Sha or Kia DPS build. This build utilizes any of the Sha weaponry found from Arch Tempered Kulf Taroth, whether it be Element or Element. For the purpose of this video, I'll be showing off a Elemental Sha build in the form of a Thunder build. So for this build, you need the Kaiser Crown Gamma, the Kulf Taroth's Aya Gamma, Kaiser Vampiris' Gamma, the Kushala Cocoon Gamma, and the Kaiser Greaves Gamma. I'm also using a Mighty Charm 2, and for my weapon, I'm using the Sha Pipes Myth. This has a health regen augmentation attached to it. As for the jewels, these are mostly DPS focused ones here. I've gone for Bolt Jewels to boost the Thunder attack of the build, Tenderizer Jewels for some weakness exploit, a Mighty Jewel to max out maximum might, Sonorous Jewel for that Horn Maestro, and finally a Challenger Jewel to add an extra level to the Agitator skill. So, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 735 attack with white sharpness, 70% affinity which is actually 100% so long as you're going for monster weak points and have full stamina. You have a 610 thunder rating with a decent defense especially against thunder and fire but you're fairly weak to water and ice. As for the skills you have critical eye at level 7, handicraft level 4, thunder attack level 3. Thunder attack basically increases the elemental rating of this build and I haven't maxed this out because the weapon we're using has an elemental boost which when in effect maxes out the rating. You have maximum might level 3, weakness exploit level 2, you only need to go to level 2 to ensure that extra 30% we need. You have agitator level 2, again a byproduct but when in effect when a monster becomes enraged you have bonus attack and affinity. You have horn maestro level 1 and critical element level 1. Critical element is normally found on the Raphalos set but it can be also found on some of the Shah weapons. This allows the elemental portion of our attack to be increased when we crit a monster. You also have the set bonus Teostra's technique, Master's Touch, preventing any sharpness loss when we crit a monster. And as this build has a very high affinity, this should be in effect quite a lot, so we shouldn't see too much sharpness loss whatsoever. So as you can see, this is a straightforward DPS build for the Hunting Horn, and it can make use of any of the Shah weapons. You don't have to use the Shah Pipes myth here. Just remember, if you do swap it out though, to swap out the Bolt Jewels to match whatever element or element you are using. Also, if you take a ailment hunting horn instead of a elemental one, you won't have critical element, you'll have critical ailment, which pretty much does the same thing but for the ailment status instead. The biggest downside about this build is its survivability, but in this case, with the Shah Pipes myth, you also have access to divine protection which adds a little bit of extra survivability. Nonetheless, this is a fun build when you want to focus on bringing down a monster fast. Anyway, let's move on to our fourth and final build, which is the Earplugs build. 
This is a build built all around the earplug skill. Now while they may not be the most optimal skill out there, they are definitely fun. They definitely make a hunt a little bit more easier as you don't have to worry about monster roars. And when a monster does roar, as you're completely immune to them, whether you're attacking a monster, healing or playing songs, you won't be interrupted. So for this build you need the Zora Headgear Gamma, the Nogagante Mel Gamma, the Zora Claws Gamma, the Kulftaros Malice Gamma and the Zora Spurs Gamma. I'm also using a Master's Charm 3 and for my weapon I'm using the Empress Raw Sticks. This has a Health Regen augmentation attached to it. As for your jewels, I've gone for a mixed bag here. Firstly, I've gone for earplug jewels to max out the earplug rating. I've then gone for tenderizer jewels to max out weakness exploit. A mighty jewel for some maximum might. Handicraft jewels for some extra sharpness. An expert jewel to max out critical eye. A blast jewel to max out the blast attack of this build. And a sonorous jewel to give us that horn maestro skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 861 attack with white sharpness, 60% affinity, which is actually 100% when you're going for monster weak points and have full stamina. You have a blast rating of 300 with a fairly decent defense, especially against fire, but you're fairly weak to water, ice and dragon. As for the skills, you'll have the following. You'll have critical eye level seven, earplugs level five, allowing you to ignore any monster roars. You'll have blast attack level three, increasing the blast rating of this build. Weakness Exploit level 3, Windproof level 2, a byproduct of the gear, but can still help when dealing with monsters who cause wind effects. You have Handicraft level 2, Maximum Might level 2, Critical Boost level 1. Critical Boost basically allows the raw portion of our attack to be increased when we crit a monster. You also have Horn Maestro level 1, and you'll have the Razor Sharp skill at level 1, which is normally found on the Xenojiva set bonus, but it's also found on the Empress Raw Sticks. This cuts all sharpness loss down by half. You also have the following set bonuses, Zora Magdros Mastery, Critical Status, allowing for the ailment portion of this build to be increased when we crit a monster. So there we have it. As you can see, it is a build built around the earplug skill, but it does have some DPS options, thanks to the fact that it has a high affinity and use of the critical status. The Empress Raw Sticks does have the highest blast rating out of the Lunostra weapons, so it can make use of that. But on top of that, the Lunostra Raw Sticks also has access to some decent DPS songs. The main downside about this build, unfortunately, is the survivability. But nonetheless, with your earplugs maxed out and being able to ignore every single rule there is, this build allows for a little bit of extra quality of life when taking on the hardest hunts in Monster Hunter World. So there we have it, those are even more builds that I like to use for the Hunting Horn. Of course Monster Hunter World is always being updated with new monsters and gear which can potentially cause these builds to change and become even stronger, especially with Monster Hunter World Iceborne on the horizon. So when major updates happen to any of these builds, I'll be sure to release updated videos. Also remember that almost any task in Monster Hunter World can be taken on with any weapon and gear set. You don't have to use what is shown off in these videos. These are just the sets that I personally like to use. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful or informative, and until next time, I've been Dartblade, bringing you even more builds that I use for the hunting horn. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.